Of course. Hey, Jerry. Greg. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the appetizer again. We're looking at Force Unleashed 2 of LucasArts. Mm -hmm. Sequel to first Force Unleashed, so we'll see if they improved anything. And they didn't. Well, they <laughs> sort of did, and they the sort of didn't. But they sort of didn't. That's more true. <laughs> oh, so looking at it first, it has got an opening cutscene right here saying, you know, Star Wars has always been a story-centric franchise, and for some of these two, well, it looks to be... Yeah. And it's better when lightsaber. Yes. Uh, so, being that Star Wars is always story-centric, did Force Unleashed 2 kind of, like, break the rules a bit by having a clone of Starkiller? What's not even the clone? I mean, the whole of the Imperial Forces are clones. Nice smell of forest. Right, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, clone but is exactly new to the series. But apparently, there, there are many clones of the Starkiller, and he... Well... As you can see, <laughs> who's got a dog? I got a dog, but shoot it! <laughs> but that's not important right now. My dog just expressed his feelings about Force Unleashed Two's story. What, okay, right. barking man. I, I mean, that's all there is to the story. Let's face it. I mean, yeah. Star yeah, Star Killer is cloned, or maybe he's the real one. Nobody knows. But Vader retrains him and then he betrays him again and Starkiller goes out to search for his former comrades and in the end he probably dies or disappears or something because we all know that he has to disappear in order for the original trilogy to make any sense whatsoever <laughs> we're really stretching out episode 3 and 4 yeah well there was quite a big gap technically you know Luke aged trying to be the baby to just being an adult. <laughs> so anything that happens in between technically really doesn't matter. But it's just, you know, it's kinda like those Naruto fillers. No, like I do like how the first one works, you know, it kind of did type some loose ends in some sense how you know stuck here technically oh yeah, mild spoilers for the first game, but if you're watching this then you probably uh, already played the first game. Mars World, no, it's major spoiler, is that yeah. <laughs> the ending now? Yeah, Star Killer accidentally formed the uh, rebellion, or at least Darth Vader allowed it to happen or something like that, so he can overrule the Empire, that was the whole point of it. And this one sort of seems to sort of follow up from Star Killer, you know, just sort of being, a, being under Darth Vader's influence, but then he's not, and it's just trying to find uh, General Carter, the, the blind Jedi from the first game, and well, this guy here, Juno. And apparently he spends the whole time saying, Juno! Where's Juno? <laughs> Pretty much becoming a form, a form of Michael Cera, a mix of Anakin. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's just awesome. Yeah. Well, I like how the, well, for the story, this, it seems like they made Darth Vader mo look more worse than he's supposed to be, because, like, isn't he, like, supposed to be kind of smart, yeah. but apparently he, he, let, he screws up with Starkiller. Why and, is like, this happening to me? Messes up. This is coming from a guy who went, no, at the end of the third film. Those who came before me went So mad. he's probably still in the learning process. I believe uh, yeah, he's not success. exactly. I mean, he's probably still, still in the Axie stage. The well, fate. regardless, you know, like the first Force Unleashed story was complete, basically. Like, Craig said a lot of, like, these small details and loose ends were tied up. But that's just it. They were tied up. You can't expand on them anymore. There's no point to making this sequel whatsoever. If it said, it shows. Yeah. I mean, if it took place like after episode six, then it might have some relevance and it might go somewhere. But I don't know. I don't see what's the point of Star Killer's second adventure, basically. Okay. Okay, so I'll give it to gameplay. Actually, I like this bit. This bit I found I found pretty cool. But then again, <laughs> things like that are kind of cool. Yeah. Oh my god, did yeah. you hit all the platforms? You hit another platform. Oh my <laughs> god, you were actually awful. And oh, you missed that one. <laughs> that was the point. <laughs> oh, you hit number one. Jesus Christ. Will's not trying to miss miss them. He's trying to hit him. If you, you force push them away. 
instead of use his head, which isn't probably that he's smart. Well, Star Killer has a lot of power, so he can survive those sort of things. Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, let's talk about the gameplay. I mean, well, you saw it from the tutorial sequence that uh, a little bit of the uh, force powers and attack combos have been kind of like like tweaked to make it a, li a little bit more streamlined, but streamlined it's still is the... Just, it's the exact same control still. Yeah, it's just it's sort of refined, made it low. I don't know, you can... I forgot, could you lock it in the first game? I don't know, but... Uh, you couldn't exactly lock into the first game, but this... You this can't lock on, sort of, but you know, the hands of like, you know, just made a giant power, I really, I really like it. It was quite... Like, the thing about the gameplay, it has its quite funny moments, like a bit later on in this bit, where you can sort of, like, tell him, he goes, Oh, why can I live this anymore? Just jump, jumps off the building. I quite like that. That was quite like fun. The, the Jedi mind trick here. Yeah, exactly. It's quite <laughs> amusing for the first few times, but it gets a bit of, Oh, yeah, that again. Yeah, it was like, oh, well... I mean, you can kind of expand its use after a while. Yeah. And when you find out, like, you have better force powers, or the only ones that you've been using all the time. Yeah, and it turns out there aren't really that many new force powers, so... <laughs> I mean... That's uh, good to know. <laughs> the only one I saw in the demo was the mind trick. And everything else was basically already in the first game, so, you know... The first time force I... Push, will. Yeah, the first time I <laughs> for, force pushed, like, a million stormtroopers out the window, that was awesome. But here it's just the same thing. I saw yeah, it. Yeah, like, you know, you pick him up, you throw him against a laser beam wall. You know, same sort of things. And, you know, the enemies that block your lightsabers, enemies that block your force power. Luckily, yeah. there's no, no stupid force power ones in the demo. But, yeah. Yeah. but they will be in the full game, and they will ruin the later stages. <laughs> Seems to be a lot more uh, enemy, uh, like they they scaled back on the enemy variations, but they give you. Know, what any many many enemy variations to begin with in the first game? They were like the more the more annoying ones. Yeah, but this is the beginning level. And in the first level, it was just stormtroopers and the well, just and the, and, a, and the rebels, which are just rebels. different types of but that's the same sort of AI. Just. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the gameplay <laughs> the gameplay is refined, and that's about it for me at least. And Star it's like Star Killer looks like a poser with two lightsabers backhand. I, I mean, come on. Does it feel like Star Killer is more powerful in this one than the, the first one? Well, obviously, about, about the same, you know, which is an actually bad thing because he's seem really gonna. I mean, I mean, compare it to the original trilogy. They they're really over the top powerful. Right. Everyone how it's impressive when Luke ever did a backflip. Well, unless you're doing like 15 before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, you know, Star Star Killer brought down a Star Destroyer. So yeah. Yeah. Luke struggled with an X-wing, and he's apparently the you know. Chosen. The one. chosen one. The chosen <laughs> one. The and and Star Killer brought down a fucking space dreadnought. So yeah. So you wonder why he dies anyway. <laughs> <laughs> kind of when he has all his power. At the end of the first game he just kind of uses all his power to blow everyone away and save the Rebel Alliance and then he gets tired I guess. But I'm, yeah, I'm, the, the, the story of this force of peace is kind of kind of just puzzling why why they went this route. Yeah, I've heard nothing but bad things about the story, which is not good. Well, like from what I heard from Diego, who said uh, the two endings for this one are as equally as bad as the first one. Well, like, worse. Yeah, like, so, I mean, the light side of the original one was a good ending, but the dark side one was just silly. Though, they apparently they, the, they, the, the DLC for the game was yeah. good, though. The, the DLC was apparently made, made, made it good, but other than that... <laughs> That was interesting. I haven't heard. <laughs> much about, yeah. Much about no, I, I just heard that they really just a huge racial opportunity. Like, they build up to this really good thing, and in the end it just turns to... Well, it like just they, turns like to Starker going all Anakin angsty the whole time. Just him, <laughs> just him doing that, which is kind of not a shame, because he's kind of... In gameplay, he seems like it's all badass, but in cutscenes, it's all... Oh, yeah. Yes, Juno. Yeah, you so know. if you were to describe this to a Star Wars movie, what would this one be? Attack of the Clones. <laughs> yeah. Easily Attack of the Clones. M maybe it's because this this is in on Camino, which is an Attack of the Clones, but it just has that <laughs> feeling. 
I mean, Starkiller basically has his existential crisis in this game. Like, am I a clone? Am I not a clone? Not a clone. Who Why who am I hearing all shit? these voices? <laughs> no. And it's hard, I mean, you know, the whole time I find his, long, his love or these pesky things in love with. Yeah. The whole time. As, as opposed to trying to sort of, you know, think about the rebellion sort of 